Hey, afternoon everyone. Uh, welcome back to the ranch channel. I uh, just got a text from a neighbor. He's uh, got a little bit of a pink eye problem going on in his herd and he asked if I'd be willing to come up and help him out. Um, we are already planning on getting together to walk through his planted annual field to kind of see what he's got growing right now. And um, so we figured we'd kill two birds with one stone. And this would be a good opportunity for me to test out a new purchase of mine um, that I played with a little bit. But uh, this will be this will be a good kind of shakedown for it. So I'll show you that here in a second. So after a few failed attempts uh, with that pole syringe, realizing that it wasn't going to be a viable option all the time, let alone um, for multiple animals in a row, I decided to go ahead and purchase myself a, a dart gun, a medication dart gun. And this is what I decided to go with. It's a capture from the from the capture company. Um, just their medication dart pistol. So I went with the pistol simply because, um, you know, my, my cattle are, are very tame and I could walk amongst them and get, get very close. I really had no need for a, lo a long range rifle type. So it is CO2 fired, uh, which I liked. Um, I've heard mixed reviews on the, the pneumatic, you know, the, the air pump system. And I bought it with a bunch of their one-time use disposable tarps. Um, my neighbor that I'm gonna help today does have one of these capture rifles, but that rifle was a, a cost share purchase with another neighbor of his who is currently using it uh, with his herd. So um, he wants to give this pistol a try. He does have the reusable kind of the silver bullet uh, syringes that you fill and you actually um, use a 22 blank charge to fire, um, but it'll work out of my pistol. So uh, let's get going. I'm going to get packed up and we'll head up there and uh, start working through his cattle. So reusable needle and you're using again the ones that have the ports out the side for basically better, better distribution, right? Mm -hmm. So open on two ends. So it actually shoots out more like a T. Yep. yep. And it's got that little barb on there to, so it won't just bounce off. That's what that barb there is for. Okay. So it'll stick in them. Yeah, hold it in place a little bit. And we're going to be using the generic Draxon. Mm -hmm. And you feel like you've been happy with that? Yeah, I think so. Do you know cost? cost difference wise between brand name and the generic? Well, I know the, the Draxon was, uh, cheapest I could find was $5 a cc. Okay. And I haven't, uh, I did, but I forget what this, uh, I think it's about half price. Oh, okay. So that's pretty significant, especially when you end up paying for a whole bottle. All right. I'm gonna check there and it's both the same ingredient i mean it is you know the same there are other things you can use it's just that the dosage has to be low enough to be able to use it through a gun now you can use la right la 200 la 300 but yeah, yeah i remember those doses you dosages are so large they actually recommend you do you break it up into two shots one on each side of the neck yeah. And uh, if they're not in a catch, I don't know if you're going to get the opportunity to hit the other side of the neck after getting one. Fire and pin. Okay. Out. Gotcha. Okay. Your feather. Make sure it makes contact with the fire and pin. Or Good. Put on board. This is why once you get fluid in here, I keep that upright next to the feather with the firing pin out. Gotcha. So you just put in a 22 blank in there. Yeah, 4 to 10 cc charge. And the 
safety should be on for you. Yeah. Perfect. <laughs> Yeah, he's definitely squinting. And like you said, yep, messy out the back end. There it is. I got it. it. Yep. Now they seem to be over, but the breeding season is pretty much over too. Gotta love the amount of dragonflies you got flying overhead right now. I just wish they'd work a little harder and get more of the more of these flies. Will they take flies away? Oh yeah. She's coming back around. Big boy.
Uh, when did you plant this field again? Let's look up here uh, see if we can see the difference. And it was straight straight oats or oats and alfalfa? No, this was no alfalfa, no uh, perennials, all annuals, but it was oats and a bunch of other things. That then you, you made for hay? Oh, yeah. hay? But what I can distinguish is that anything coming up in that row, which now is pretty hard to be able to find it. Anything coming in that, up in that row probably regrew. Okay. But then... But your sorghums, and you obviously have some, what is this, turnips? Or... The turnips are collards. Call, or yeah. Grape, yeah. Um, it's brassica. Brassicas. Yeah. This was all planted when, you said? It was, it was seeded when? Immediately after baling it off, which would have been uh, July 1st. Okay. And it's what, August... 16th or 17th yeah. it's around that august 18th so a little over 30 days old mm -hmm. and then what's the plan for this whole field when you're done uh next year it could be go back to corn or beans okay probably corn so corn or beans next year probably corn but for the rest of this year are you thinking you're going to get another regraze yeah. okay so three more seed out here right so it's all just regrowth. Yeah, and when I aerial seed rye, this is on the map to seed. So that would be done, let's say, first week in September. Okay. And um, I don't expect too much in the fall, you know, like usual, maybe a little bit. Mm -hmm. But then in the spring, then all these annuals will be gone. Right. And your cereal rye will be coming on strong. And then will that be a grazing crop then, or will you? Could, but I usually don't graze in the spring. Okay. Usually just terminate it with chemical and then plant it. So your cereal rye that you're planting this September, aerial seeding this September, is a straight cover crop to cover the soil all winter. Yeah. And then you'll terminate it and plant into that with your corn. Yep. If you're new to cover crops, going to beans would be safer. Um, but to answer your question, I'm going for soil biology. I'm going for living, keeping a living root in the soil, mm -hmm. you know, as much of the year as possible. And that's what rye will do. It'll keep pumping exudates and things. So uh, going to corner beans, either one, I still want a living root in the soil. Uh, gotcha. You know. And probably corn because it was beans last year, or this year, I guess, or yeah, but this last is, year. This is the grass crop, obviously. Right. And so beans might be better too. Right. <laughs> I'll, I'll have all winter to think about that. <laughs> uh, beans would be easier because you've got a grass crop here, then you got your rye, and then you go, you know, beans. Okay. So the cereal rye getting aerial planted, well, that, I mean, they'll still be, there'll be regrowth on this field. The cows will still be coming through to graze after the cereal rye seed is, is spread on the ground. So is that your your reasoning for doing an aerial spread as opposed to like coming in here with like a cyclone spreader and just spreading it yourself. I can only imagine that a, an aerial seeding would cost more than if you were to come out and do it yourself. You're right, that's a good question because that's what I'm contemplating what to do. Uh, see, as soon as they get through with this, you can see how bare that ground is. Yeah, right yeah, there. yep. And that'll be timed about right for the aerial seeding. Okay. So, that's good. I want the ground as bare as possible. I mean, you know, I mean, I want some right. seed to soil, soil contact. So I was thinking I should at least bring the drill out here, conventional drill, and and take a little strips of rye through here mm -hmm. to compare it to the aerial seeding. Gotcha. And then if I want to save money, I could do the whole thing. Right. So you were saying one of your one of your your considerations with grazing this a second time when this planted annual comes back, particularly this sorghum is the frosting that's going to be going on in the fall by the time the cows come back through here. Uh, what's the issue with frosting and freezing with sorghum sudan grass? Yeah, it's the prussic acid that you can get, uh, uh, can uh, 
can harm cattle, poison them. Mm -hmm. And so you got to be careful there, follow the rules. You know, if, it, uh, if you get a hard frost, then you wait a while. Yeah. Some people say a week, some people say two weeks, but you wait a while and uh, let it dissipate. Let the so would you be as concerned with, you know, the diverse mix that you have in here and it's not a straight field of, of sorghum or you still just don't want to risk it even with, with the diversity? The diversity helps. Yeah. But I would still, like if I was raising this and all of a sudden we had a hard frost, I'd take them out of here someplace else and bring them back later. I wouldn't take the chance. Because you look out that way, there's, there's plenty of... Oh yeah. Plenty of acoustic acid potential. Oh, that's it for this one, guys. Uh, thanks for watching. Um, breeding season is officially over, so I'll talk about that in my next video. And uh, it's hot. We got a real hot week coming, 105 plus actual temperature, more with uh, the heat index. So wish us luck. Um, any questions, comments, concerns, sarcastic remarks, you know the drill. Leave them down below, and I'll talk to you guys later. Thanks.